Salutations, respected viewers. This is Jewel from Ireland. Here I am aboard HMS Britannia. You can see some of the rear admirals who commanded this war yacht through the decades. So um, this uh, ship was launched in 1954. We had royal yachts dating back um, to 1660. Um, royal Escape, as in alluding to when Charles II got away, was one. There was Royal George, there was um, Victorian Albert II, Victorian Albert III, um, and a few others. Anyway, there was none by the 1930s. In 1938, they considered uh, commissioning a new one, but they just didn't do that in the end. Um, the Second World War intervened. It wasn't discussed again until 1951. And by that time, uh, George VI was ailing, but they thought it might uh, assist him regaining his health. Anyway, um, so then he died. Four months later, June 1952, they began to lay down this ship in Glasgow, and it was called Ship 691 because they hadn't decided on the name for it. That was, uh, top, it was top secret what the name of it was going to be. But um, anyway, then they uh, finally, finally, they commissioned this yacht, and um, you're looking in at the Queen's breakfast room there. And it was launched in 1954, as I said, a bottle of champagne broken over its bows and Her Britannic Majesty announced his name was Britannia and the crowd was elated and um, surprised so they sang Royal Britannia. Uh, anyway, so it was like a floating royal residence. It was used for diplomatic conferences, Commonwealth conferences and so on. You could see on YouTube footage of the Commonwealth Conference in the Bahamas about 1986 in which Her Majesty the Queen is meeting Rajiv Gandhi and the various um, uh, heads of government of Commonwealth countries. So um, it would always be uh, escorted by a, um, a Royal Naval warship. This was an unarmed ship, that there would be um, 20 marines on all time for Her Majesty's personal security. But in wartime it could be converted to be a hospital ship, and in 1986 it was used to rescue some British people who were fleeing a civil war in Yemen. Um, so things had to be done to the top possible standard. And rather than shouting in a salty servicemen slang, the sailors had to communicate by hand signal to maintain the placidity which was a meet for a royal residence. So um, there were various royal honeymoons on this. Princess Margaret, that's the Queen's uh, sister, she went on honeymoon in this. You can see a royal boudoir there. Um, and uh, Princess Anne and Prince Charles and others, they went on this. So it came to 1997 and uh, the royal yacht needed to be renewed. The Conservative government said if they won, they would indeed stump up the cash. Obviously, it would be taxpayers' money. But the Labour government said they were agnostic on the issue. But the defence budget was, was going to be severely cut, so could they afford it? And Blair's government said that they couldn't. So it was decommissioned on, on the um, uh, 11th of December 1997. Sailed up here to Leith, and Her Majesty was brought ashore at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and she struggled to maintain her composure. It's the only time I've seen her almost cry. And that was it. So it was decommissioned. It's permanently moored here to help the uh, regeneration of Leith, which is the port of Edinburgh. And you can see the uh, royal coat of arms there. On the soi qui mal y pense. Shame on him who thinks badly of it. Relating to the guard, I've explained that elsewhere. You see the two anchors, E2R, as in Elizabeth uh, Regina Secundus, Queen Elizabeth II in Latin. You see the Tudor rose, the red white, signalling the end of the Wars of the Roses in 1485, on the 22nd of August that year, when the um, uh, Yorkists were defeated by the Lancastrians, and then um, uh, Henry VII, who was, a, who was a Lancastrian, married Elizabeth of York, the uh, sister of Richard III, who just been killed, to reunite them in the Tudor dynasty. Um, so that's a symbol of English heritage as well. And then HMY Britannia, Her Majesty's Yacht Britannia. So I do wish they bring it back, but it doesn't seem to be likely because there have been 10 years of austerity. The um, defence budget is always being slashed. So it's, it's just not going to happen. I think it'd be politically unacceptable if there's other things have been cut back that's happened. So for example, it sailed to Morocco in about 1982 for a state visit to um, King of Morocco, but King Hassan II was an absolute monarch and he was notoriously tardy. So he turned up hours late for dinner, which was the height of bad manners. But uh, that was his way of underscoring that uh, he could mistreat people and that makes it respectable. See a royal car here. So well worth visiting this uh, yacht. It's open from uh, 9.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. But do get here early because the queues build up very quickly indeed. So you could easily be waiting half an hour to get on board. £16, that's a ticket for an adult. Um, it's £8.50 if you're a child or if you're in the armed forces. So people in the armed forces are children, is that it? 
the discount for pensioners or um, students is, a, is only very slight, they're only paying 14 quid. So here we are at the Port of Leith, you can see how the harbour is very protected and there's a further fort beyond. And that land you're seeing in, on the skyline, that is um, Fife, Fife is a Scottish peninsula. All right, so uh, do come along, and this is this is the um, main deck where sometimes the band of the Royal Marines will parade, playing their instruments. So, a great many world leaders have been here. Look at the bell in the year 1953. I think I think it was laid down 1953. They only launched in 1954, if I've got that right. So they could pull out this awning if they needed shade, or indeed to keep the rain off. So they're, they're these guides in the special uniform, the trousers and the tartan trousers, giving you uh, information about the place. They're all ex-military service personnel. We always see a collapsed old pontoon out there. Do you see the wooden structure? So when they had a jetty out to boats in slightly deeper water. And up above they've got various flags. Ooh, can you see them? I can see them, yeah, signalling something or other. I can't read these things, I don't know what that says. Um, but obviously before radio they had to signal with flags. They stood for letters and things like that. All right, so um, let's have a look at this royal coat of arms up high. With the lion and the unicorn. And it comes from a previous royal yacht, as it said. Okay, well, I shan't show you the whole thing, but you're getting a taste of it. It's highly recommended. There's nothing quite like it in the world, anyway, that I know of. A royal yacht, you can walk around, a little bar there. And they even brought special um, bottles of Malvern water for Her Majesty's tea and things like that. There all sorts of naval charts in the days when they didn't have computers to show you these things quite so easily. Right, I'll switch it off now.